So before we start, I just want to give a big thanks to my dear viewer, Ian Fowler, because he's the one who showed me this very nice way to come up with the curvature of y is equal to f of x. So thank you so much. And yes, this right here is a kappa because we are doing the curvature today. Here we go. First, let's take a look at the picture. Let's say the function looks like this. This is y equals f of x. First question, what's the curvature at this point? What does that mean? Well, one way to interpret it is, it's just how much it bends right here, right? So to do so, we will have to consider the angle. Let me just put down a horizontal dashed line. We will have to see how much it turns upward. And perhaps I will also draw a tangent line here. And let's call this angle theta. And we will also have to consider how long this is, right here. Right, because we're taking this and bending upward in this case. All right, so the curvature kappa, you can look at it as mm, the change of angle with respect to the change of the arc length, so ds. And sometimes if you don't want to consider negative curvatures, then you can just take the absolute value of it, so that's fine. By the way though, is it possible for us to have a curvature equal to zero? If so, what's the case? Well, leave a comment down below, let me know. Here, we're just going to use this idea to continue. We want d theta ds. Well, let's come here again, and perhaps let's draw a horizontal segment. That's just a small change in the x direction, so dx. And then I will go up right here. So this is dy. By looking at this picture, where of course we have a right triangle, we can see that dy dx, it's of course our derivative, the slope of the tangent line, right? And that's just opposite over adjacent. If you use the angle, you can say that's the same as tangent theta. Very nice. Now we want to squeeze out the d theta ds. Do this first. Let's first just take the normal derivative, d dx so that we can just have the second derivative and let me just put down y double prime and then the derivative of tangent is secant squared and then theta and now you will also have to multiply by the derivative of theta with respect to x so d theta dx hmm i want to have ds not dx what do we do? Well, don't worry, because we can use the chain rule. Check this out. So y double prime, this is equal to secant squared theta. Here we have d theta. Let's actually just divide it by ds, but then multiply by ds over dx. That's the chain rule. And now we have this right here, and that's exactly what we want. Aha. So we can take this and take that, put that to the other side. So we can get d theta ds equals the second derivative on the top over secant squared theta times ds dx. That's pretty much the idea. But now, we were only given y is equal to f of x. So we want to end up with a formula with just x or like y or maybe the derivative of it. So we are going to figure out what this is in terms of y prime. How can we do that? The key is we can look back here. We know that tangent theta is equal to y prime, and we can somehow apply a trig identity. Check this out. Let's first square both sides so that we get tangent squared. So that we get tangent squared theta is equal to y prime squared and then we can just add one on both sides because this way tangent squared plus one is just our secant squared theta so secant squared theta equals y prime squared plus one and this is what we would like to use for that so d theta ds equals y double prime over y prime 
squared plus 1. Now, the next thing that we have to figure out is just ds dx. ds is a small change in the r length, which is just the hypotenuse right here. So you can look back to how we derive the formula for the r length. It's pretty much the same thing. Now, ds is the hypotenuse, and then we have dx and dy. Use the Pythagorean theorem. We know ds is equal to the square root of dx squared plus dy squared. And now let's just do some algebra. Let's factor out the dx squared. So ds equals the square root dx squared times 1 plus here we divide it by that. They are both with the second power, so we can write it as dy dx and then squared. This is just a multiplication, so square root of this, just do that, square square root cancel, so we get ds equals dx times the square root of that, 1 plus. And for dy dx, that's write it as y prime, square. Finally, just put the dx to the other side, so ds dx equals the square root 1 plus y prime squared. And of course, we will just put this right here. Square root 1 plus y prime squared. And now here's the beauty. Notice the insides are actually the same. This is to the first power, and this is the same as to the 1 half power. So we just have to add the powers together. 1 plus 1 half, we get 3 half. So ladies and gentlemen, our curvature kappa is equal to second derivative over 1 plus the first derivative, and then we square that, and then raise to the 3 half power. And if you don't want to consider negative curvature, then just go ahead, apply the absolute value like this. And here is our result. And one little thing to mention though, notice the inside is always positive, right, for the denominator. So, if you don't have the absolute value, then the sign of the curvature depends on the sign of the second derivative. If the second derivative is negative, that tells the curve concave downward. So, if we have a concave down curve, then the curvature there is just going to be negative as well. So here's the bonus part. Last time we already have a formula for the curvature, but this is when we are given a factor function. Right now, we only have y is equal to f of x. So is it possible for us to utilize this formula to get the formula that we have today? Yes. All we have to do is to parameterize this function. And we can just do it the easiest way. Put x to be t and y to be f of t. And yes, we can always parameterize the function in this manner. And now we can just take out the derivative right here. x prime will be 1. Do it again, x double prime will be 0. Take the derivative, y prime will be f prime of t, and then y double prime, we'll just write it as y double, f double prime of t. And now we can just put this in there. So, curvature is equal to x prime is 1, and then we multiply that by y double prime. I'm just going to write it as f double prime, but t and x are the same, so we can just put down x right here. And then divide it by, this is 1, square that is just 1, so we have 1 plus y prime, I will write it as f prime, and then that's use x, because we're given x. And then square that, and the denominator is raised to the 3 half power. And lastly, if you don't want the curvature to be negative, just attach the absolute value on the top. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the formula that we have.